Bless them, Father, for they have sinned on everything that is the hunter, the hearst, and the helmsley, for they know not the bad questions that they ask. That's right. His shirt and tie slug daddy, FTW. And I know what Andre Corbell is going to say. He's going to say, I did it first. Well, a couple of things, Andre. Number one, you're Canadian. It kind of like half counts. Number two, number two, if you went curling in the tux, then that's not so bad. Number three, the difference is the Schlegg Daddy makes it look good anyways. Let's go ahead and kick off this Q&A, and let's see what you sinners came up with today. Ugh. Mid Carter J kicks us off, which I'm sure going to be some straight-up queef bullshit. Who plays guitar better? Double J or Paul C? That's exactly what fucking Paul McCartney. You're gonna compare the Memphis Beat Car piece of crap who broke 10,000 guitars and couldn't draw one damn dime out of him to Paul McCartney. You know who's a better guitar player? Your mom. Excuse me. That's the skin flute. Anyways, 30 Hail Hunters for your transgression. Moving on. PKK Dakota. What has been your favorite wrestling show you've seen live? Uh, I've seen some wrestling shows. It's been years since I've been to like a big company show, mind you. But uh, going back to 2012, the one at the Hall of Fame weekend uh, at the Dan Gable Museum, Waterloo, Iowa. It was a hell of a lot of fun, especially that Legends Lumberjack match when Danny Hodge hit somebody with that stiff right and Baron Von Raschke put the claw on somebody. The place went bananas. Bananas. That was a lot of fun, especially being kind of behind the scenes with everything. I absolutely enjoyed that tremendously. Mounties Corner. Oh, my God. You know, you would think, you would think. He, he, he aspired to the Canadian dream. He found himself an Elsinore Brew type of blonde. Now, you might be wondering, what does Mountie have to do with the movie Strange Brew? Now, I assume as Canadians, you believe in hockey, curling, and the McKenzie Brothers. I mean, that's what I think. Probably watch SCTV on Endless Loops. As you should, as you should. There's nothing wrong with that. But surely this question is going to be some bullshit. Like, dude, you're on a mission to make three daughters. Why the fuck are you tweeting me questions about wrestling? And surely this is going to be bad. Let's we'll see what it is. Double J's in a porn with Misty Stone. You're asked to join. Would you? Number one, if Misty Stone wants to fuck, she has to wait for me to ask. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Number two, number two, numeral fuck you. That's what we're on. Numeral fuck you, that's Canadian Espanol, bitch. I put that curse on you, three daughters, and I goddamn meant it. Ugh. Fucking join in. What's the old saying? If it's not gay, if it's a three-way, it is when it involves a second dude. That's ridiculous. The only two types of acceptable three-ways in this world are a dude with two chicks or three chicks and the dude can watch. Everything else is stupid. 300 Hail Hunters for your sins. 500 Hail Hunters. And you're going to have four daughters. So fuck you. Canadian numero uno. That's what you are. You don't sweat. Kieran Chase. Actually, with a legit question this time. Our brony, resident brony. Between AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe and The Miz versus Daniel Bryan, which match are you more excited for at SummerSlam? I will go with Miz and Daniel Bryan, because to be fair, we've seen, I think, plenty of Samoa Joe and AJ Styles over the years. Uh, Miz and Daniel Bryan has more of a... Oh, jeez, I hit the thing. Huh, oh, fuck, who cares? Not like most of you are watching at this point anyways. Uh, Miz and Bryan have longer history in WWE. It's more of a WWE type of story. The elements there are more intriguing to me. That's the match I'd rather see. Danny Boy. Why does Vince use the superhero concept in 2018 when that stuff hasn't worked since like 1995? Now, Danny Boy, you realize that the majority of the blockbusters out there involve some type of superhero concept. 
The issue is not the concept of the superhero. It is the Superman style of superhero that Vince believes in. Like, he tries to pattern himself after one of the least successful box office success super, uh, superheroes in recent times in Superman. That's the problem. Superheroes can still be fun. It's the issue of, and then the ladies are blowing up the phone. My goodness! Trying to record here! Damn it! I'll eat your pussy later. Jesus. Unbelievable. I just can't get enough. While and out. Superhero concept works. Vince McMahon superhero concept doesn't work and hasn't worked for like 30 years. Junior is all in just a way for Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks to get a big payday before they sign with WWE. If they wanted just a big payday, then why in the hell would they go through and front some of the money themselves? I don't know what the fuck the angle here is, what they're really trying to accomplish. Um, yeah, but they'll be with WWE eventually, punk asses. Fuck Cody Rhodes. M.I.M. Arsenal. Looking back at it, is CM Punk overrated? It depends on the bucket that you put him in, and it depends on where you rank him in the pantheon of recent WWE superstars. Uh, me personally, he wasn't exactly my flavor. He wasn't exactly like that dude for me. Um, I thought when CM Punk was that stupid babyface ECW uh, CM Punk, I thought he was the shits. Like absolute drizzling shits. And when people would talk about him like he was some type of great wrestling god or something, and I saw this, I said, what in the hell is everybody talking about? As time went along, he got to show more of his prickly kind of dickish personality, which made him somebody that was easy to hate, somebody you could make some money with, somebody to kind of ride the edge a little bit, even though he's straight edge. But, you know, CM Punk more closely uh, mirrored Philip Brooks. They're both kind of jerk-offs. And that's cool. You know, because, let's be honest, nice guys finish last in this world, and that is absolutely the truth. You either do the fucking or you get fucked. Which would you rather do? Wouldn't you rather do the fucking and administer the pumping yourself? I think so. Oh, all these morals and all of this. Ah, bullshit. Shut up. I get you nowhere. Take it from me. Don't be nice. Really, don't be nice. Don't sit there and kiss people's ass and try to make friends and family. In the whole grand scheme of things, it's all, God damn it, I, I'm recording. I could just put it on silent, but, you know, then I'll probably forget about it. But, CM Punk overrated, back to the point. <laughs> uh, again, just kind of depends on your perspective. Alex asks, uh, which Hogan was the best? Hogan from the 80s, Hogan during his WCW run, or his short 2002 WWF slash E run? Uh, some of his best matches from a style standpoint, from a work standpoint, came in that 2002 short WWE run. Um, from a sheer entertainment value, uh, WCW, when you go from 96 and on, uh, but still got to be Hogan from the 80s, because that's the Hogan I grew up on. Young Savage Armando asks, does Mabel Viscera deserve a Hall of Fame look? If Coco Beware could be in there, then why can't a former King of the Ring be in there? Why can't we have big sexy Viscera in the Hall of Fame? Nelson Frazier deserves that spot, doesn't he? Because at the end of the day, wrestling is fucking fake. The Hall of Fame is fucking fake. So I don't frankly know sometimes why the hell we care so much. So sure, put them in there. Who cares what types of standards do they have anyway? That doesn't matter. And that's the truth. It doesn't matter. Murphy, are you going to watch anything this year from New Japan's G1 series? Um, wasn't planning on it. Limited time that I get free. Probably can think of better things to do. Maybe I should. Maybe I want to. But nah, F it. I don't. Ox Cord Sensei, or Senai, ah, oh, whatever the hell. Uh, Nash's Quads, God's Nose, Sid's Leg, Hogan's Hip, Fatal 4-Way, who wins? <laughs> Vince McMahon could tear both quads to the mere thought of this match. 
Who wins? Nash's quads, God's nose, Sid's legs, uh, Hogan's hip. <laughs> If you said God's Y chromosome shooter, we might have a different story here. Uh, and while God's nose, when Hunter's nose is majestic, I don't know if it quite goes into the category of these other three. Hogan's hip, nah, I mean, he's hit <laughs> the back issues. I mean, how are you going to pick just one? So we're down to Nash's quads and Sid's leg. Nash's quads, Sid's leg. Only one of them arose as a direct result of Johnny Ace going up to them and saying that they should expand their offensive repertoire, which included trying to deliver a big boot to the face of Scott Steiner, of all people. <laughs> Over the second rope, it's always going to be Sid's fucking broken leg. <laughs> it finished the match, and at random times, people just bumped into his freaking leg. He's in there. Ah! The son of a bitch finished the match. That's what matters. Sid's leg FTW. Chase Oliver. What's with these terrible allegations against my boy Randy Orton? I didn't even know. Happened to look. Not surprised. He wanted to introduce everybody to the Viper. Now, if you are a member of that creative team, male or female, and actually partook in that, and shook the man's hand, then shame on you. Now Chase obviously would have surpassed the hand and just went straight to the Viper and would have tried to tell everybody that there was nothing wrong with that. And in his mind, there wouldn't have been. In his mind, he would have been just fine. Mounty would have backed up his butthole onto it and thought that would have been just fine too. But hey, different strokes for different folks. I'm not here to judge and I kick the damn thing again. Again, who gives a crap what percentage of you that actually clicked on the video are still watching it anyways? Uh, the King. Ah, yeah, yeah. To answer your question, though, Chase, <sighs> are you surprised? And WWE were looking into a bullshit. They knew what was going on. They didn't fucking care. Don't do anything about it now. Too late. The King. Could the Indies compete with WWE if they can get more together, merge together? No, because then you just got more egos and more stupid shit. No. Not gonna work. The best way to compete with WWE right now is like in a variety of ways with a variety of different companies kind of taking small hacks at them. Nick Tennyson, would wrestlers like Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock make it in today's WWE? As their characters were packaged back then at the height of their power in the 90s and the early 2000s, one simple answer, fuck no! The times are different, wrestling is different, the fans are different, the product is different. And there is no way, and I mean no way, that rock shit today would be anything other than corny, and Stone Cold's act would wear out as quickly as Pat Patterson's underpants. What does that have to do with anything? Who fucking knows and who fucking cares? No. From a pure talent standpoint, I feel like The Rock, because of his talent, because he would have had that five-star appeal, would have had a better chance. It's not saying they could have found a way to be different and be main event guys. Uh, but what would have been so different with a Stone Cold and so many other guys? It'd be hard. It'd be really hard. Especially if you took those characters from 20 years ago and transplanted them into here and now. And Shinsuke style finishes us off by asking, who's the bigger wrestling mark? Deluxe Man or Marcus Smart? While two absolute raging marks... Neither one of them named their Twitter handle after Nakamoron. So you are a bigger mark than both of them. Thank you, love you, bye. All right, that's it for this Q&A. All of you that ask questions, do some ale hunters. You need to repent. Repent for your sins. Remember, this is OTRS Central. I'm the Schlag Daddy, damn it. And this is not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. I tell you to buy the shirt, but you cheap bastards won't do it anyways. So F it. I don't care. Later.